I'm not a fan of making videos with a negative vibe, but in this instance, I don't think I have much of a choice. I've been playing through Sports Story on the Nintendo Switch since it shadow dropped, and I'm a definite fan of the previous game, Golf Story, which in fairness didn't launch without its fair share of bugs as well. It still doesn't excuse releasing a game in a very poor state though, and that's exactly what's happened. Sidebar themselves tweeted that a patch is in the works, and I do hope that hopefully some of the issues within this video will be resolved. As always, I'll revisit any games that get patched up, but I can only go by what I bought, and well, that's what you're going to hear about. My name's Mark Walker, welcome back to Switch Up. What's it all about, and what exactly is going on? Well, let's find out. So let's start out at the beginning then. Golf Story was released back in 2017. It had a few issues when it launched, but it saw a lot of patchwork and it's now in a very good state and is actually currently on sale. A game that I would highly recommend. Sports Story is something we've been waiting for for a long time, but sidebar games are only a small team and understandably it takes time, especially when you go and take your original formula and try and expand it in every direction. Sports Story then sees a small island with several different academies. They range from golf to a tennis academy. You can play football, squash, as well as lots of different mini games that are dotted throughout the experience. Now on paper this sounds incredible, with the whole thing being tied together with a narrative that's sometimes a little sloppy but never fails to make you chuckle. The writing is excellent and much to my wife's disappointment is one of those games that will make you laugh out loud in the dead of night when you're playing on your Switch. The gameplay then still has the core golf mechanics. You can whip out your clubs at any time and you can use those to hit certain bonus items which will give you cash or you can just toss golf balls around. There's a world map, several different locations that you can visit, more of which become unlocked as you level up. And by level, I mean gain rank in either golf or one of the other disciplines. And there are several golf courses, as well as matches to be played. Still, everything's sounding fantastic. This all takes place from a top-down perspective. And quite early on, you can move freely, although, as I say, only accessing certain areas as you reach certain levels. It operates on an objective-based quest system. These are all noted down in your journal. This can be accessed at any time and it will show any items that you're carrying as well as any balls and your current ranking. The golf mechanics themselves will feel familiar. Once you've chosen your angle, direction, ball type and hit the button, you're good to go. At the bottom of the screen, you're shown this, essentially allowing you to time your shots by stopping it in this area and then this one. All very simplistic and straightforward and it should work flawlessly, but the performance. Now, while it targets 60 frames per second, Sports Story currently stutters anywhere from 60 all the way down to 30, with entirely random stutters taking place, which will throw your shots off and have you frustratingly missing things that you otherwise would have achieved. Now, these same mechanics are applied to several of the mini games, and it can make what would be a light hearted, fun experience turn into a frustrating one. In Golf Story, objectives were quite straightforward, but generally you knew where you were going next. That's not the case in Sports Story. There is no map, there's no waypoint system, and you will find yourself many times scratching your head as to where to go next or how to get there. Again, that's something that can be done quite well and it gives the feeling of exploration. A typical example would be the tennis academy. It will tell you to go to the blue tennis court. Where exactly is that? Well, you won't know that until you've spent a good bit of time running aimlessly around in what feels like a maze. Why not have a few signposts up telling you where to go next or even an arrow just pointing you in the general direction? If you want to maintain that feeling of exploration, then put a map on the wall so that you can have a look learn the areas, heck you could even draw it out on a piece of paper and then you'd know where you were going next. It might sound like a really small issue but when you're constantly being asked to go to different locations of the map and having not a blindest bit of idea where you're going next it really does get frustrating. So some form of navigation, as I say even something on the wall would be perfect. Some of the quest ideas are really nice. Things like hitting a smoky ball to get rid of some bees or taking on the course pro at the long drive competition, they're fun and enjoyable little side activities, but then others rely far too heavily on fetch questing, running from one point to the other collecting pieces of litter, only to have to do the exact same thing with books. And don't get me started on when you finally get that fishing rod, and even those fetch quests I can look past. They make sense, at least I kind of know what I'm supposed to do, but then there are the glitches. At the moment, lots of the quests you're given will either automatically fail you, or they'll automatically pass. You might kick a ball into a net for it not to log your score, but then suddenly say you've won. And then we get onto some more issues with core mechanics. Now, it uses a tennis game mechanic that's not dissimilar to some classic Mario Tennis or others, but there seems to
seems to be very little control of the direction of the ball. And when you have to hit a certain number of targets in a set time and you're wrestling to actually change the direction of this ball, it feels more like luck when you finally achieve it, which it shouldn't do. Aside from golf, it feels like most of the sports aren't quite finished yet. Tennis balls will bounce off the back wall only for the other player to keep hitting them and the game carries on. You think you've won a point and then it will give that point to them. The BMX, I had an issue where I couldn't actually pedal and it's no joke to say you're looking at about a 50% glitch ratio of the systems that are here. Items that you need for side quests will disappear. They won't respawn if you have to try again. The indicator to show whether you've completed missions will completely disappear and you might find yourself either soft or hard locked in several different areas in the game. Now I understand that these things are not easy and I understand it's a very small team and I appreciate that they've put out a message and they're working on it and I absolutely will revisit the title but then we get on to the crashes. Now for Nintendo to showcase a game that has crashed on me no less than six times now it's really not a good look. I've been playing predominantly in handheld mode so maybe docked is better, I don't know. And I'm using a Nintendo Switch OLED, but five crashes. Now, what I will say is it does have a reasonably good autosave system. Four of the crashes, I respawned literally at the next area, so there was no backtracking. And one of them, I lost about 10 minutes of play. I have been reading the Reddit forum related to the game though, and there have been people that have been playing through the experience only for themselves to suddenly see the final credits and it reward them for finishing. There are others that are locked into certain places and the skeptic in me just can't help but feel like pre-Christmas sales were a motivating factor and look, maybe they should be, but do you really want to do that to a beloved, fran what is becoming a beloved franchise? I don't know, I don't know. So Sidebar Games, thanks for patching it up. I think we're in a a delicate place on the Switch at the moment, whereby lots of people are saying we need a Switch Pro, and then there's another side that say, well, we don't need a Switch Pro, we just need developers to actually take the time and make sure they release games in a good state. And this came just after the big hurrah about Pokemon, and I think quite a few people, certainly if you go onto the Reddit forums, are not overly pleased. Now, the actual game itself, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's as good as Golf Story. There are some brilliant writing moments. It's very funny, but it relies too heavily on side questing and the core gameplay mechanic of not having any mapping system just isn't as fun in this style. In the old golf story, it worked well, but here it's, yeah, it's a bridge too far for me. The reason I say don't buy it yet in the title is it's still a flawed gem. You can still see the passion and love that's gone into it. And I reckon they've just had to rush it out, honestly. And there's a, there's a gem in here for sure. It's a bit random. It's a bit all over the place at times, but I can see what they were trying. And I think for those playing this a year from now, it'll probably be a blast. Check the link in the description. I'll link to the patched up episode that invariably will follow this. Thanks to all of you. I, as I say, I don't like to be negative, especially about small developers and small indies, but you've also got to be realistic and this is not it. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do in all of the areas that I've mentioned. And just a big thanks to all of you that enjoy the channel. If you do, stick around. If you don't, then don't. And let me know in the comments your thoughts. I hope you're having a good one. Looking forward to New Year's. And as always, a big thanks to our Patreons and members. All the links to that in the description. You guys are amazing. And if you want to save 10% on any of your games, use code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch Up. Cheers, guys. See ya!